Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the First Methodist Church of Maybank. The altar flowers today, I want to start with that. The altar flowers today are for a very special lady. And they're offered by the church staff in grateful appreciation for this lovely lady that has taken on the garage sale for not only this year, but last year as well. And we'd like to say thank you, Sherry Fisher. Now, if you're a visitor for the first time, we'd like you to fill out the yellow slip that you'll find in front of the pew. And if you have a prayer request, please fill out the blue card. And you can give that to the usher or you can put it in the offering plate. We have quite a few announcements this morning. The women's Bible study resumes tomorrow with the study of Second Thelosians. The book club will meet Tuesday, April 23rd. Bring your lunch and join the group in the, at the noon hour in the coffee bar or at one o'clock join us for the book discussion in the prayer room. The life group gathering for this evening has been canceled. The next gathering will be Saturday, June 1st at the Brazil's home. Please see Jeff or Leanne for details. Our church will be hosting the GMC Wall Shakers Prayer Workshop on Sunday, April 27th, 10 a.m. to noon in the sanctuary, so please mark your calendars to attend. The celebration luncheon for our one-year anniversary with the GMC is next Sunday, April 28th. This will be a potluck fellowship luncheon. Food sign-up sheets are in the narthex. And for questions or information, please contact Dorinda Stedman. Now we have one more announcement. The Cornerstone Scholarship Meeting for this Sunday after church service has been canceled and will be rescheduled for Thursday, May 2nd at 6 p.m. in the conference room. Now I'd like, I know you all are probably eager to find out all about the results of the garage sale, so I would like to now introduce you to Sherry Fisher. Like you all don't know me. So guys, it's over, yay! We're gonna get our church back in shape in the next couple of days, I'm sure. But we, our grand total is, we're looking at 10, eight, almost $11,000, yay, for the church! So we all know garage sales are hard, but they're not as hard at this church because you would not believe the people that come up here. People that didn't even sign up, we're here all day. We had people that took a vacation to come work in the garage sale. It is just phenomenal what you people do. So I just have a few thank yous. I will try to make it short. I know we've got a lot to do today. But if you donated or brought items, we thank you. If you took a week off from work, Maria, and spent every day here pricing and organizing, we thank you. For those who came to help, even some coming every single day to arrange, price, and organize, we thank you. And gentlemen, if you lifted boxes, arranged tables, moved furniture, went for pickups with all your bad backs and ailments, and never complained unless you were at home with your wives, we thank you. And ladies who brought food, who brought chicken, who brought pizza yesterday, and all the wonderful desserts and casseroles, we thank you. And for those ladies who in the kitchen planned, prepared, served our wonderful meals, we thank you. And for all those ladies, those hold ladies, those cashiers, those baggers who kept all those customers happy, we thank you. And also for the youth who came up and helped us move furniture, and lastly, to the guy upstairs, who gave each of us the strength to work in his name for his good. We thank you. And now let's worship together.
got something? What? Family life center. We've got a pool table upstairs. Make best offer. You take it. Uh, yeah, haul it off. So how many of you, real quick, how many of you wish that your prayer life was better than it is? I'm glad to see that. Uh, it was mentioned just a minute ago. Wall Shakers Prayer Workshop will be this next Saturday from 10 to 12. And it's put on to help us move from where we are in our prayer lives to becoming more and more enthusiastic about prayer and just to build our prayer life up. So I strongly invite you to be here for that. It's two hours, y'all. Um, and and uh, uh, our, our guest speaker, uh, Lauren Yates, will be here. She is the pastor of a church over by Corsicana. I don't remember what the name of it is. Uh, but I promise you, if you come to that, your prayer life will be strengthened. Also, next Sunday, added into the celebration, uh, we all, I think all of us know that uh, earlier this year, we paid off the note on the Family Life Center. And uh, so... We're going to celebrate that during service next week with a note burning. So I encourage all of you to be here for that. I also encourage you to invite everybody that you know. Uh, because we have paid off that building, you are debt-free, and you don't owe anybody anything. So uh, we're going we're gonna to burn the note right here in the sanctuary, and I've already got uh, some youth wanting to do it. Uh, but uh, please make sure that, that you're here, not only for the celebration of our one-year anniversary, but also that we're going to uh, uh, celebrate uh, being debt-free. The last thing I've got is Talitha. Come here. Stop, stop. Where's Parker? what happens when you make the pastor mad. Wonderful. Okay, so, what are you for? Huh? Yes, you are. Parker made the archery team. After working so hard this past year, practicing and practicing and practicing, she, she, uh, what was uh, selected, is that the best way to put it? Or help me out over here, Dad. Selected to, to be on the archery team this, this coming year. So congratulations. Now I'm going to be honest with you about something. I don't really know about all this school stuff because they didn't have this stuff. When, when I was going to school, you went to school and then you went home. Um, so Kalita uh, participated in a color guard competition yesterday. Uh, she scored a 91. And we'll be moving on to the all-stars level in color guard. Congratulations. Golf team's going to state.
y'all think this is easy? Try standing up here with people yelling from both sides. Three boys going to say, oh, you're in the choir today. Woohoo! Gunner, Cameron, and Lawson are going to state with the golf. So as it was said just a minute ago, let's prepare our hearts for worship. Scripture this morning is Psalm 3, 23, I'm sorry, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us riches beyond measure. We can only return a fraction of what we owe you, but we ask you, dear Lord, that you will bless our offerings and help us to use them wisely in your service and for your glory. Amen.
please join me now in professing our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. down to the front. Picking on your little sister. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, okay. All right. So everybody picks on you, then, right? Not all. The time. At least he's honest. Yeah, not all the time. Okay, y'all ready for the question? Here we go, here we go, here we go. What is a salesman? Y'all know what a salesman is? Some, some, <laughs> some, someone who, who sells things and, and, and uh, they, uh, they make their money off of commission, which is a portion or a percentage of what they sell, okay? Okay, so what is a salesman's favorite scripture pattern? gave you part of the answer when I told you what a, a salesman is. Okay, you ready? Here you go. Three, two, one. The Great Commission. You don't know what the
the Great Commission is? The Great Commission is when Jesus sent the disciples out. Huh? Well, you know, when you become a grown-up, you know, that's something that you think you are, but you're not there quite yet. You'll understand that. You'll understand that. So, how many of you have something that is your favorite? What is it? Basketball? Watching TV? Volleyball? Basketball? Pigs? What about you? I can't hear what you said. Painting? Your cat? Baseball? Not having time with your sister. Math? What's your favorite thing? Chicken? Soccer? Okay. So, let's let's do this. We're going we're going to bring up your chickens and your pigs. Okay. So so you've got. You've got your chickens and you've got your pigs and, and they're all there and, and you're standing out there and you're using your math and you're counting how many you've got. And one of them's not there. What do you do? No, you don't shoot the pig. No, wait a minute. Y'all, y'all aren't getting this. They're over here eating and shooting pigs. If if one if hang on, if one of if one of those chickens or one of those pigs disappear, you know they run off. What do you do? Put a shock collar on them. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Everybody's talking at the same time, and I can't hear you. Get a new chicken. mean to tell me you wouldn't go looking for the chicken? Hang on. What? Sweetheart, I know you talk louder than that. Pray to St. Anthony? Hang up lost posters. There, she's on the right track, y'all. Call nine one one. What? Ask God to let it come back. So, Jesus says that this is going a lot longer than it should. <coughs> Jesus is called our shepherd, and we are his sheep. The Bible tells us that if he has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders off, you know, he'll leave those the other 99 and go find that one because each one of those sheep are important to him because he loves them so much. Have you ever asked yourself, how much does Jesus love me? you ever asked yourself that? Well, the answer is Jesus loves us so much that he will go to the ends of the earth to bring us back into his flock, okay? All right, so let's, let's bow in prayer, and y'all can go to Children's Church and cause Chrissy all the problems. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for loving me as much as you do. 
Help me to love others as much as you love me. Amen. Bye. in your hymnal if you're not familiar. God have blessed you this week, say amen. If you hadn't say on me. Is that you that went oh huh? Uh, is, is that what it is? Well, I'm glad you're up here. Tell me where you saw Jesus this week. Dry cell. Beautiful rain. When the rain stopped, Your granddaughter visiting with us today. It's good to have you, sweetie. Grady as Noah in Sunday school. I can just imagine. I bet that was cool. Nancy's over there going, hmm. Oh, is it? <laughs> Many Methodists and their leaders at school. Great grandson's birthday party. Where do we need to see God this coming week? Everywhere. We, we, we've got a several uh, that we need to be in prayer for. Uh, many of you know that Patricia Adams fell this past week and uh, really, really broke her leg. Uh, she had surgery. Um, surgery went good. Uh, Johnny said that it's going to be a long, long process. Um, so be in prayer for Patricia. Um, Right now, they're looking at different avenues for physical therapy, and so uh, be in prayer for Patricia and for Johnny uh, as they go through all of this. Um, Gary Preston, uh, he and Helen, uh, members of our church, moved to, I believe it was Utah. Uh, Helen uh, sent a message uh, the other day saying that Gary had fallen, and, and so we need to be in prayer for him. Also, uh, Tony Boyd. Uh, who fell, uh, I guess this last week or week before last, uh, and broke his pelvic pelvis. Um, I was talking with uh, Peggy, and she said that he is standing uh, and uh, 
using, uh, I guess, a wheelchair or a cart or whatever, and when he needs to actually stand up and move, he can move sideways but cannot move forward. So prayers for him. Um, continued prayers for uh, Jimmy Lowe and her family. Uh, also, Doug Henson, I talked to him yesterday. He's doing good. Uh, continued prayers for him. Misty Bohan and Debbie Thomas. Kathy Wallace fell uh, and hit her head. Um, prayers for Lisa Alexander. Uh, continued prayers for Lisa Harris. I mean, Linda Harris and for Rose Giordano. Um, and I know that there's a lot more that we need to be in prayer for. Uh, so let's bow and, and join together in prayer. Almighty and gracious Father, we uh, come to you right now. We, we're thankful for all the blessings that you pour out on us. Father, we're so thankful to you for answered prayers. So, Father, we come to you now asking once again to hear our prayers and answer them. Father, you have heard the names that have been brought up. Father, we, we know that you've already begun to answer these prayers. And we thank you for that because that shows us that you are an active God. You're active in our lives. You move with us. And no matter what direction we go, you're there. Father, we praise you for that. Father, as your church, we continue to ask for guidance. We ask that you show us the right path. We pray that you will keep us in tune with you that we might hear you worship you and serve you we pray this in your son's name he taught us to pray this way our father
please join the choir in standing as we read from the Word of God. We'll read this morning from 1 John chapter 3, beginning with verse 3. All who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as He is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin is either to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does not does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Holy Father, open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears, that as you speak to us today, we will receive those words and put them into action in our life. May the words from my mouth be a blessing unto you. Amen. You may be seated. So, um, how many of you have ever uh, had a child come up to you and ask you a question about God? You know, like, where does God come from? Or, were there dinosaurs on earth? Or, you know, something about the Bible. And, and it made you kind of think about, hmm, and start sweating a little bit, wondering what you were, how you were going to respond. How many of you have ever had an adult come up to you and ask you a question about God? How can you believe in something that you don't, you can't see? Uh, how can you give God, this God credit for something that you don't know actually was done by that God rather than it was just luck? Um, how do you know the Bible is real? Any of y'all ever had questions like that? So I'm going to ask you a question today. For those of you that never experienced this, now you you ever hear this sermon again, you'll be able, all be able to raise your hand. Okay? Where does sin come from? I heard evil and what? Within. So our scripture text today, John is giving an explanation to the Christians because there was a certain group that had a different view on sin. They had a different thought of what sin was, how it affected people, how, where it came from. Uh, it was the Gnostics. You see, the Gnostics believed that sin was okay. Because you see, the human body is no good. And that if you chose to sin, it was okay because it didn't affect your relationship spiritually. So basically, you could sin to your heart's desire and it wouldn't affect your relationship with God. 
So John thought it was about time to explain to the, the Christian community what this sin thing was. So he had five basic truths about sin. One is, what is sin? Sin is the deliberate breaking of a law which a person knows well. Think about that for just a second. So to put that in our terms, that would be like going and getting on 175. What's the speed limit on 175? 70. How fast do you drive on 175? 85. 85? Did some <laughs> so if if you wanted something tangible, that's a sin. Because you know that that speed limit is 70, but we break it anyway. So for, for people that have to have something visual, that's it. You see, sin is to obey self rather than God. So if it makes us feel good and we do it, that's obeying what self says rather than what God says. Even though we know it's wrong. God gave the world the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet. You only have one God, and that's me. But it's not always a physical thing. Did you know that we can kill someone without stopping their heart? It's called killing the spirit. And that's when we attack someone emotionally, spiritually, mindfully. And we know that we're not supposed to do that. So that becomes a sin against God because we are doing it to pleasure ourselves rather than to pleasure God. What does sin do? It undoes the work of Christ. You see, Jesus is the Lamb of God and in he came to take away the sins of the world, to place them on him. The one that was perfect and sinless took all of the sin upon the, of, of the world upon himself so that we didn't have to deal with sin. But sin is bringing back what Christ came to destroy. I had a preacher friend tell me this one time. He said, when we do something against God or against Christ, we negate the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. I had to think about that for a little bit. But when we reject what Christ has done for us, we nullify what Jesus came to do. And sin causes that. So, I guess this next question that I have is, is one for the ages. Why is there sin? Why is there sin out there? Scholars would say that it comes from the failure to abide in Christ. It's, it's not something that's this mind-blowing deal. It simply means 
as long as we remember that God is continual or Christ is continually with us, we don't sin. Think about that for just a second. If we know that Jesus is with us, we don't sin. Let me look at that from a Dan Gurley standpoint. If as a child I was in a store and my mother was with me, I'm not going to do anything wrong. To do that would be foolish, especially with my mother. You had to know my mom or you'd have been laughing at that one. As long as we knew or as long as you knew that an authority figure was right there, you didn't do, you didn't do anything wrong. I can prove that. We'll go to 175 again. You're flying down the road at 85 and you top the hill and there sits highway patrol. What are you doing? The front end of that car is going to kiss that concrete. You're going to stop that thing immediately. Because we know he's sitting there with a radar and we don't want to be breaking the law. In our spiritual life, if we know that Jesus is there and we continually pay attention to that, we don't sin. But when, when we forget that Jesus is there, we tend to do the things that we shouldn't do. Back years ago, I had something explained to me about that. And basically it was this. Live your life as if Jesus were standing right next to you 24-7. Live your life as if Jesus were standing right next to you 24-7. In reality, he is, but we sometimes forget that, right? We sometimes think that, oh, well, Jesus is over here uh, helping Lance, so I don't have, he's not over here with me. Where was he? But as long as we continually keep in our minds and our hearts that Jesus is there, we're not going to sin. Where does sin come from? The devil. Right? Sin comes from the devil. Satan is all sin. It states it right here. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. That means it's all, he's always been there. And he's always been on the attack. I guess another, another question would be, why do you sin? Why do you sin? Sometimes it's because we think it's going to bring us pleasure in our lives. We think that by taking the initiative and and looking out for numero uno it's gonna make us feel better but in reality it's just a short fix some would say that it's human nature to sin Yeah, original sin. We've heard that all our lives, right? Adam and Eve sinned first. And so it's a part of our lives. Look, I'm not telling you anything new here. There is an evil power out there that is constantly on the attack. 
there is this darkness that never stops. And this evil is a hostile power against God. And when we sin, we fall into that sinful nature and that sinful power instead of focusing and paying attention on what is important in our life, and that's God. The last basic truth, <laughs> the last basic truth about sin is that sin can be conquered. Christ conquered sin. He faced and dealt with Satan and conquered sin. Otherwise, his crucifixion and resurrection would have been null and void. But Jesus faced off with sin and conquered it. So, okay. Jesus faced sin. He faced Satan and defeated I'm not Jesus. So how do I conquer sin in my life? By focusing on the one that has already conquered it. By making Jesus number one in our life, by knowing that he is with us through thick and thin, and when we deal with the sinful nature that, that comes along, the things that we have just talked about, knowing that Jesus has already accomplished all of this, all we have to do is have faith and believe in him. And when we do that, we can claim the same victory that Jesus did over sin in our lives. You see, John wanted the, the Christian community to know then and know now that sin is not just something that we let our bodies enjoy and move on like the Gnostics believe, but that sin is real in the world and it's evil and it's out to destroy. But through the victory of Jesus Christ over sin and over Satan, we can conquer and have victory ourselves. So in those moments of doubt, in those moments of trial, in those moments of maybe thinking about me, and we feel like there's just no use in fighting it anymore, just remember that Jesus is beside us and that he will carry us through those moments so that we can have the final victory ourselves. Let's pray. Almighty and holy God, we're so thankful to you for your words to us today. Father, we ask that you continue to show us your mercy and your grace. Father, in those moments when we have to face off with sin, remind us that your son has already dealt with it and all we have to do is lean on him. He will help us through those moments. And Father, as we go from here today into a world that is full of darkness. Let us be a light, a beacon to the world so that they know they have hope in you and we can bring them into that light. Father, we pray all this in your Son's name. Amen. The closing hymn is, Pass me not, O gentle Savior.
our hymn of invitation, anyone that would like to become part of this church family uh, by transferring your letter, or you would like to profess your faith in Christ today by receiving him in your heart, you're invited to come as we sing. I receive this this benediction go here from here joy in your heart smile on your face and a song on your lips because i know a lot of us are going to go eat out for lunch i dare i dare you to sing a christian song when that waitress or, or server comes up to you and when they look at you really weird say let me tell you about jesus god the father son and Holy Spirit will place somebody in your path this week. Ah, uh, this is your opportunity. Don't blow it. Amen.